Welcome to Wagered on Tilt, everyone. I am T. First and foremost, before we dive in today, I do want to apologize for my absence. Uh, I have been working on a lot of personal projects and models for betting. I did fall behind by producing content for this channel. I was trying to create one video a week. That's a lot of effort and a lot of time. Um, and I always want to try and teach and train people on how to think and build tools without just giving away the keys to the castle. So I really needed to try and focus on not only my own projects, but also what could I do for this channel that isn't just redundant, regurgitated things we've already done previously, just pointed at different sports. So there are going to be some more videos coming out um, for this channel. They're not going to come out every week as they were before. I just can't keep up with that kind of output while trying to build my own stuff on the side. I also have been providing some content for unabated.com. If you don't know what unabated is, it's a betting tool service that helps backstop a lot of your models and ideas and helps you find EV on different types of bets. It has all kinds of odds from different makers and it's an amazing tool. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. If you want, they also have a free Discord and I'm in their Discord as well. In today's video, we're going to be talking about combinatorics. Now, what that is, is a way of trying to find out different combinations and variations of data that can exist. So what we're going to use this for is over a couple of videos, we're going to build up how can you figure out all of the possibilities of a series event, right? So we're talking about series like in playoffs and things like that. You can use this tool to try and build out three game series, five game series, seven game series, and any other series count that you can think of. Um, so in here we're going to use Microsoft Excel and within Microsoft Excel we're going to be utilizing something called Power Query and then we're also going to write a very small little bit of VBA. So not only is this information really helpful for just series information but you can use it for all kinds of different projections and different ways of quickly figuring out all permutations that could truly exist. So let's go ahead and dive into the spreadsheet. All right so what I want so what we're going to go over again is combinatorics, and this is basically a way to figure out every possible combination of outcomes. And this will be useful for when we have, um, you know, multiple games in a series. You know, WNBA has three in the first set of the playoffs, then it moves on to five. Um, other sports have a best of seven series. So we want to know every option that we could do. You know, you could have a team go win, 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 win. They could go win, win, loss, win, win. They could go win, win, loss, loss, win, win, and all those permutations. Now, rather than typing all those out, um, there's a different way you can do this. So I'm going to come over here, and we've set up where our games are going to be. Then I'm going to say win, and then L for loss. Now, those are the only two you can have for each game. You either win or you lose. So we're going to go ahead and set that up that way. So now that we have that, the next thing we want to do is turn these into tables where we can capture the top piece, hit control T, table has headers, and we'll just keep doing that, control T, table has headers, control T, uh, control H, control T, table has headers, control T, headers. All right, now that we have that, the next thing we need to do is say, I want to add each of these tables into a set that it will basically multiply every variant through. So what I need to do is use a thing called Power Query. That is free in Microsoft Excel. So you come up to Data. And over here we have From Table Slash Range. Go ahead and select that. Um, this does take up a decent amount of RAM, so just be wary of that, that it can run slower the more often you're running it. So now that it is loaded up and we see this in here, I'm gonna come over here to Close and Load. And when you click that drop down, you're going to choose close and load to. And then you're going to choose only create connection. And click OK. And what that's going to do is add that into a group of information that we're going to be using. So we're going to go ahead and do this for all of these. OK, so now that we have all of these set up over here, as you can see, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and click on this field here, just this first table, come up to data. And then on the left, you'll say get data. And we're going to say launch Power Query Editor. It's going to open this thing back up with all of our connections in it, which again is all of the data we're going to be using. And what we're going to go ahead and do is click on this first table. And up here we have add column. So we need to do this. Um, if you don't know what a database does or how it relates, you need a key that references other data. 
So that's really what we're doing is we're just referencing a way for these to all create their combinations. So I'm just gonna leave this as custom and I'll just put one, okay. Go to the next table, add a custom one, leave it as custom, hit one. Doesn't matter what you call it, you just need to make sure that it's consistent throughout all of the tables. That way it knows how to link all of the information back together. Right. So that one is now done. So what we can do is click home and we're gonna come up to table two and over here we're gonna have merge queries, right, in the editor. We haven't exited the editor yet. I'm gonna click this drop down and choose merge queries as new. Select that and this thing's gonna open. So what I'm gonna be telling it to do now is how to start defining these things. So I'm gonna start with table two, which is game one. And I'm going to then choose this where it says custom one. And then from this drop down, it's saying, which table do you want me to create the permutations against, right? Which one do you want me to go win, 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 loss, loss, win, loss, loss. So I'm gonna choose the next table, which is three. And I'm gonna choose this. You wanna make sure that these are highlighted for the same column. Um, otherwise it's not gonna work. And for this one, we don't need to get into why this works, but you choose full outer and it just says all rows from both. And that basically means create every single possible outcome. You'll hit okay. And it's gonna create a merge table for you. Now that you've got this lovely new merge table, you're gonna come back up to merge queries, choose merge queries. This will open, and this is the newly merged table. Now this is where it goes a little bit quicker. You choose custom. So we originally merged two and three. So you go to four, choose custom again, and full outer. Okay. Then come back up here, merge queries, custom. So we did two and three, we just did four, so we're now on five. All right, now that that's done, we can kind of clean this up a little bit. Um, what we can do is come in here and where this little double arrow here, right, is showing a split. If you double click on that, you can come in here and say you can keep the uh, header of game two and you can ditch custom and get rid of the prefix and hit okay. And you can do this for each table. Get rid of the custom, leave the game three. And you'll notice that it's starting to expand out and that's because it's creating all the permutations that we need. Come over here and we can right click on custom and say remove. Now that we have this, this is every permutation that's possible from a seven game series. Now you'll notice that this does include some that could not really happen, right? You can't have seven wins in a seven game series. That's okay, we're gonna clean up this data. So you come up over here to the top left again, close and load, close and load two. Then it's gonna ask you and you're just gonna say, basically drop it into a table on a new sheet. So new table, new worksheet, and just hit okay. It's gonna generate that data. And from here, I'm just gonna take off the information for the filter, get rid of that filter. Great, now we have every permutation. That was the first step to getting this set up. And again, I would recommend once you build one of these once, keep them uh, and just save them somewhere in a folder that way you don't have to keep rebuilding this type of tool. Once you have it once, just reuse it. So for those of you that do not know what VBA is, you can close this out on the far right. Uh, VBA is a type of code uh, and language that's very simple to learn. You can pick it up very quickly. Um, if you don't wanna learn this, I can give you the macro for this. It's relatively simplistic. So in here, you would uh, go to the developer tab. If you don't have this tab, you're gonna wanna go into file add-ons and turn it on and come over here where it says visual basic this will open up where you're going to write some code just right click on one of these sheets and say insert module and we'll say sub combos now i'm going to go through this relatively quickly while explaining it um, if you want to slow this down or pause the video you can do that to try and copy this code uh, but i will be explaining everything that i am typing through here so that that way you can actually learn so if you want to freeze the video, this would be great. Um, as I'm going through this though, I am going to be explaining everything while I'm writing this so that you can learn. So the first thing I like to do is say application dot screen updating equals false, which means turn off screen updating. So it doesn't kill the computer when it tries to run this and application dot screen updating equals true. So what this is going to do is turn off the screen refresh, let it run through all the calculations and then turn it back on again. So now that I have this, what I wanna try and do is evaluate 
um, how many times do I need to do this? So I'm just gonna come over to here. So our first record really is starting on row two and we are going to be ending on row 129. So we need to create something that will loop through records two through 129. So now that we know we need to go two to 129, we'll say four X equals two to 129. And then we're gonna write next to close out our loop. So then we need to do a couple of different counters here. So we need to keep track of how many times we win when we're looking through the data. So wins will always start at zero and outcome will always reset at blank. And we'll explain that here a little bit further in a moment. So the next thing we need to do is start going, how many wins do we get? And once we hit four wins, stop doing this little process of building up win, 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 loss, and things like that. So in here, I need to do a thing that will loop through each of these columns. So to loop through a column, I would say four y equals one to seven because it's games one through seven and always enter your next immediately so that you don't lose that then i'm going to say variable i'm just going to call my own variable variable equals cells x y dot value two so what it is going to be doing is saying go to row two column one whatever value it finds in here so in a2 go ahead and put that in here so we'd see a w and then what's going to happen is in here i'm going to say outcome equals outcome and variable so as we're looping through this right it would say get me the w and since outcome is initialized at blank it'll say blank and w so now outcome equals w and then on the next step when it goes to b2 we're going to say variable is equal to w so it's going to say w and w which now makes outcome ww then we'll do it again and then it'll become www and that's how we're going to start building out this string pretty rapidly now we need to figure out a way to leave this once we've gotten four w's right so what we can say is if variable oops if i could spell variable equals w then wins equals wins plus one. So every time we get a W, we're gonna say, hey, that team won, we're one step closer to needing to exit this loop. Then what we need to do though is have a tracker that knows when we hit that four. So if wins equals four, then, and over here we're gonna just put in our string, right? So column H is where we're gonna drop this info. We'll say range, h and x dot value 2 equals outcome and then we're also going to say exit 4 so it's going to say once we get four w's right so we're going to keep adding the w to the string in variable and we're going to be having a counter going so once we hit four wins we're going to drop in whatever that string is whether it's four wins in a row three wins, one loss, one win, whatever that is, it's gonna stamp it in the file, and then we're gonna exit this loop. And we'll say end if, so that closes out that end if statement, and we need to close out this end if statement, end if, and we're done. So now that we've written this, what it's gonna do is create every possible value in here, and then we're gonna be able to clean up the data. So there is one typo in here, so it's cells, not cell. That's my keyboard not working on me. So we'll go ahead and run this, all right, and it's done. And as you can see, we have every permutation. The last thing we need to do is get this and hit copy, paste, data, remove duplicates. Yep, I wanna remove all dupes. Great, found 37. So in here, we're gonna go ahead and delete this extra blank. So we're gonna get rid of it. We have 35 possible outcomes, and then you can also sort this data if you want. We'll go ahead and sort it that way. So this is if they went lost, 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 lost the first three, won the last four, lost the first two with one win, lost the fourth, won the last three. So that is combinatorics. It's really not that bad when you think about it, right? You're just taking every possible permutation. So if you have a win, loss, win, loss, you would then need to do a win, 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 loss, loss, win, loss, loss. 
those are the options that you could get within there. So it extends it over several games, right? So if there's three games, five games, nine games, it doesn't matter. It extends it over that period of time. Now, in the next video, we're going to go over trying to calculate out the probabilities and how can you set up the rest of this stuff. Um, so in here, this was just to initialize, how do you build this out? As I mentioned in the video, I really hope that you save this information. Um, that way you only have to really build this once and then you have a sheet that you can go copy and paste from in the future. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I am creating some content for unabated.com. Um, if you haven't checked them out, I do recommend you go check them out. They have some phenomenal tools that I even personally use. They have in-game betting tools for things like baseball. They allow you to see all types of different lines from multiple bookmakers. That way you can try and figure out, you know, where can I find an edge? Do I have a chance to arbitrage there? There's a lot of amazing tools, especially for this upcoming NFL season. They have great stuff. If you haven't checked them out, definitely go do that. You can also sign up for their Discord. It's great. Uh, there's tons of information in there. People are always wanting to learn and find an edge. They're asking questions and figuring stuff out. It's a great growing community. If you did find this video helpful and useful and you think it's important for other people to learn how to do these kinds of things, please give that video a thumbs up. That way Google and YouTube will be able to bubble this information up to the top of their algorithm. So until next time, happy wagering.